Hello my treasures, it's time for a new mercenary video. This time we are going to be tackling Holy Synergy. A synergy that doesn't get talked about that much, either for good reasons or bad depending on who you ask. This build isn't the strongest one that I've ever come up with, however it is incredibly fun. To be honest, any team that allows you to use the Golden Monkey to the fullest advantage is really fun to try to make use of. And this is a perfect team to do so. The idea behind the team is to use Tyrion and Uther in order to protect Elise so you can get the Golden Monkey while buffing up all of your bench, then bringing out Anduin or Yorel in order to finish off your opponent. And because we are going to be scaling the attack up on a lot of our mercenaries, we also are going to be using Tyrael, which serves as another attack face mercenary. However, there is a warning I need to give with Tyrael in particular. His first ability is bugged where it will actually resummon whatever he targets if it died before he gets his attack off. So let's get on to the mercenary by mercenary breakdown. The first one is going to be Tyrion with Ashbringer as his equipment, mainly using Divine Assault as his ability, though Judgment of Humility can come up against those pesky Trigor teams. Uther is the next mercenary. We are using Liberum of Sacrifice as his equipment using Blessing of Protection, and if he survives late into the game, Avenging Wrath. Elise is the next mercenary. We are going to be using Oasis Canteen as her equipment, mainly swapping between Guiding Path and Quest of the Golden Monkey. Anduin is the fourth mercenary on the team, using Ring of Purity in order to keep him up for a longer period of time, and then swapping between Penance and Holy Nova. Tyrael is the next mercenary. We're using a Blinding Gauntlets as a way to freeze out any pesky mercenaries that we might need to do so so our opponent can't get any combos off mainly swapping between holy judgment and divine strike and finally we have Yorel, who we are using librum of wisdom this is the most flexible out of all the mercenaries mainly going to be using her for radiant light however a vindicator's fury can come up if you know you're going to get the, the death blow off and finally wrath of the lightborn can come up quite a few times because it is just a really nice aoe nuke for all of your opponent's mercenaries now with that all being said let's look at some game all righty oh four protectors huh hmm i wonder what this is actually going to be or four fighters not protectors what am i saying is there someone else mad enough to do holy or sh oh well, that instantly kills the mood. All right, we're going to do it in this order, trying to get rid of the boggy and give divine shield to everything. We're probably going to end up putting down these three again uh, because I'd rather protect our back line, to be honest. Of course, we win, win that speed tie. It's still fine. I mean, they did have two seven abilities, so it did go back and forth. It is interesting that it's been a little bit, I shouldn't say a little bit. Hearthstone Mercenaries has been very inconsistent on how things work. That maybe a new, well, a new player guide would do terrible nowadays because I'm assuming no one's picking up this game mode, especially for PvP. All right, so it is the combo. I'm hoping we don't lose here instantly. Which we could, depending on where these hit. Actually, that's... Mm. Come on. Okay, so we have three fighters to deal with. Smite, Leroy... And Rokara. You know what's funny? Even though we have three fighters, I don't think we're in a bad position per se. We can put the AoE heal or uh, AoE dot on everything. Oh, I actually probably shouldn't have done that. We probably should have just taunted up. I mean, froze. Oh, I guess I was trying to make sure the combo would go off. But I'm pretty sure this is a big mistake. Depends if they attack or not, I guess. Yeah, that was a little bit of a mistake. Okay, well, I mean, at least we got rid of Leroy. And the funny thing is, even though they have five mercenaries against our two, as long as Smite is done, we actually are not in a bad bit. Like, Smite is the only thing that keeps them in the game. Everything else here does nothing by itself. So we're actually not too bad.
Okay, okay. Smite is almost gone. This should get rid of Smite. And we get the Golden Monkey next turn. So as long as this actually goes through, we're smooth out sailing from here. There we go. Pat hit exactly what we wanted to hit. Now we just have to deal with Bashamdi and Valera. Valera could be bad. Bashamdi isn't going to be. Bashamdi does nothing here. Or not. Okay, time for a game where it's an even split. I think this is probably going to be Trigor. It's King Angel does tend to play Trigor. Actually, not one of the worst matchups that we could have because we do have a way to just protect our fighters, which is really nice. That's the whole entire reason why Uther is actually in the team. I almost cut him out at one point, but it does introduce some diversity when it comes to which mercenaries we have on board. I'm just going to focus on him there and then attack into Trigor. Got to get rid of Trigor as quickly as humanly possible. Don't think it's going to work too well, but you never know. Okay, okay. There's the Divine Shield. Now, I think Anduin is probably what we're going to put down next. I know we no longer have a taunt for that Nefarian, which may look really bad, but if we do it like this, we should be fine. The AoE bully doesn't trigger Trigor, which is nice. Plus, we're only going to be taking one damage whenever it does hit. <laughs> and we're going to heal up for five each individual heal. On Anduin live. No, he does not. That is A-OK. -okay. Because we can use Uriel next, I guess. I think we have the arrow. Yes, we do. So we can be a little bit slower with this. I think I use Blessing of Kings just to be extra safe. I know we probably didn't need to, but it makes my life a lot or feel a lot better when we do it like this. Because I'm assuming uh, even if they attack. He shouldn't be able to kill Uriel. Oh, they're actually going after Tyrion. That, um, oh, hmm. I mean, that makes a lot of sense on their behalf, but this is a team that I actually kind of want to revisit too. There's a few meta teams that I just haven't talked about ever, or I haven't talked for about in a long, long time. All right, so we're going to start the ball of rolling there, but who knows, maybe I'll do some of them. Uh, the smite combo is definitely something that I really want to try out. I know it's not the most original team at this point anymore, but when it came to early mercenary teams, that was one of my favorite ones. But it wasn't really that kind of relevant. Let's hopefully we can get the death blow on the last mercenary over there. We'll pop the divine shield. Yup, yup. <laughs> That's not going to trigger, so we don't going to be able to get the golden monkey next turn but that's still fine all right so yeah that that this is exactly what i assumed it was probably going to be this is one of the easiest thing to tell what they're going to be playing maybe because i've just played against it so much i'm actually kind of shocked i didn't run into shadow that much this week or old gods or whatever you want to call it because this team would do great against that team with all the casters that they have, which was a little bit of a shame. Ooh, okay, let's see what this person has in store for us. If I remember right, this is going to be a spicy game. Haha, <laughs> Murlocs. Oh man, that is a team that I do need to redo. It's been so long since I've done it. I may or may not try Pirates next week, but I think Murlocs is on the list. The short list of things left to do. We also need to do something with Jandis. Because Jandis is, I think, the last new mercenary that we have. I should also probably max those new mercenaries. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. Eventually I'll get to it, you know. Alright, just gonna taunt up. Hopefully, this protects Elise. Giving Divine Shield to everything is a bit annoying because it means we don't get lethal. Alright, what do we want to put down next? I think Tyriel is actually a really good option here. Out of everything that we possibly could do, I think Tyriel is the option that we want. Stop. 
Alright, slime time. Invasion. Busting of the kings. I'll keep him alive for a turn while also buffing him up. Forgot we or they speed up. So probably gonna wanna try to get old Murgle down as quickly as humanly possible. And I think this should do it. We're actually not in a terrible position per se. Maybe we won't be able to do it anymore. Oh, that actually still hits through the divine shield. Come on. There oh, thank you. Thank you for actually working. Okay, okay, okay. Uh probably should put down Anduin. Uh, Anduin would have made a lot more sense because we can actually get use out of the golden monkey. I don't I don't think we should wrath everything, but we probably will, knowing me. Then we'll try to freeze out Sir Finley. Because I have a feeling Sir Finley probably will survive because he does have a holy ability for some weird reason. I guess he has been historically a paladin character in this game. But still kind of <laughs> annoying and dumb. Well, at least Elise survives. Too bad the Golden Monkey doesn't. Alright, what do they have on bench? I'm assuming one's Cookie. Oh, Mutanus. So they went full on Murlocs. That's cool, but uh, I I don't think I would go full Murlocs. Never go full Murlocs. Eh, maybe you do. There's some Divine Shield synergy that I wanted to try out at one point too. I always forget about. Use Dark Trap. Should use Fury because that should kill it. We actually might want to do this in the reverse order. Yes, uh, oh, I guess we can just stall this out for a turn. I don't think there's a way we lose this, to be honest. We can just keep buffing things up. You're going to get a divine shield, that's fine. The bleed's a bee ticking. Alright, let's root everything in place. Do we really want to wrath times two? Uh, hmm. Let's just use judgment. And then try to use the first ability here. Should root everything. Should protect our material for a turn. That pesky divine shield is going to be the end of us. Alright, so we can use that on Finley. And taunt up again. And hopefully this actually hits Mutanus for once. Oh, okay. That is not, hmm, not something I expected to see. <laughs> I mean, the last mercenary has to be Cookie, right? I don't think Cookie can stand the true force of a golden monkey. All right, golden monkey number two to finish the game off. Well, there goes that. Fatigue also, that's funny. Okay, so a game with an even split. Let's see what they have in store for us. If I remember right, this is one of those people who I always face. And I think they were playing some type of Nemzi or Mr. Smite team. I can't honestly remember, to be honest. Smite could be bad. We may or may not be able to deal with it. Ooh, local art. So hey, I was right. They are going to be using Frost. That's actually not too bad for us. Okular can be a little bit annoying, but we can use Elisa's ability and then we can try to attack into the Boggy. I very much doubt it's going to happen. And then we can slow down the Cadgar for next turn. Hopefully everything either hits Tyrion or Uther. I would prefer Elise to stay alive. Local R is honestly probably one of the worst mercenaries to face with this team. Because attack based ones, you have ways to stall them out for a few turns, which is always nice. And they are going to heavily focus Elise. So, um, there goes with the Golden Monkey for us, but I think we are going to put down Anduin next. 
yeah, we're going to put him down. I really want to get rid of local R, but I don't know if that's going to even be possible. We did slow Adgar, which may or may not come up. And we probably should have actually, yeah, get into something else. Hopefully, <laughs> Kyrian actually lives long enough, but I very much doubt it. Oh, oh, wait, hey, he actually is living, okay. I'm gonna get Divine Shield and then buff everything up. Lose it on that, get three hits in. Man, I wish Uther was still a caster right there. Put down Uriel. Trying to get the speed tied, to be honest. And this should kill Adgar, I hope. Thinking about Wrath of the Light bound, but probably not the best solution right about now. It's going to go with this. Okay, so that hits there. Got the speed tie. And we lost the most important one. Haha. <laughs> okay, that's just going to do a bunch of damage. That gets rid at least of Cadgar. Now we have to get rid of Boggy. At least we got Divine Shields there. Okay, we're going to put down Tyrio. And Tronde. Uh, hmm. As much as I would love to focus down Tronde, I don't think we're going... Uh, maybe we will. We'll freeze them out. And then we'll use Radiant Light. Because this should get rid of Local R, which is our maid Hurl. Don't really care if we're buffing them up. And now they're just going to copy, I guess, Nemzi's ability, which... This thing is kind of a waste. Alright, so they are going to focus down Anduin. We have to get rid of four mercenaries. I think we're actually not in a bad position right here compared to what we could be. Alright, so we can use Holy Nova. We could use Radiant Light, but I think Wrath might be better. Oh, I really wish we had the freeze still, though. We are going to have to use the protection just to make sure they don't well, oh well here's the thing if we use the protection Toronde can't double anything so that's actually really nice but i don't know if i catch that here i really hope i do but i don't know Ooh, chain hill that actually screws with our plan a little bit hopefully not by too much the good thing is we're protected for two turns on two of our mercenaries. Alright, let's focus down Bane. Because Bane is going to be the next hurdle. We're going to force them to actually double Nemzi, I think, here. Only thing that's kind of sucks is the fact that we won't be able to kill Nemzi in this turn. Uh, them doing that actually is fine. Wait, they actually... Okay, that that works out in our favor. Now we just have to deal with three more mercenaries, and then we should be good to go for this game. I don't think it, there's anything they could do here that could stop us. Probably going after Nemzi with an attack. Actually, we could also just focus down the Nestra, but uh, getting rid of Nemzi is fine. Well, they actually managed to get that out. Oh, I guess it's faster because they... It sucks, but it makes sense. Oh, 22 on penance. I don't think we're technically quicker. Let's just play it safe. Focus everything into Sinestra. Them healing up is a little bit annoying. I'm hoping we actually did this in the right order. Because if we did, that should kill both. Then that hits there. We almost had it too. Oh, I mean, I guess we just finished them off here. Okay, now that we're through the games, let's discuss my final thoughts of the build. So overall, this build was fun to play. However, probably is one of the worst builds that I've actually come up in recent history. And it's probably kind of clear why that is the case. We are using a ton of fighter mercenaries, and because a lot of the very powerful mercenaries in the game are protectors, which makes going against something like Local R very devastating for this team. However, if you are facing some of the other key protector mercenaries, this team can actually hold up pretty well. As many of the meta warping protector mercenaries are actually attack-based, we have both Tyrion and Elise as ways to counter them. 
plus side about this team, however, is the fact that it is using a lot of mercenaries that not a lot of people have ever talked about in the PvP sense. Tyrael and Uriel are both incredibly good in this team. Overall, this is not really one of those teams that I can easily recommend to y'all trying out unless you really want to use some of these mercenaries in here. And like always, if you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, bye-bye.